Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for September 18th, 2023. Today I'm going to be discussing NATO's weapons problem. Now, we covered on Friday Putin's speech in Vladivostok at the Eastern Economic Forum, where he spoke of the development of new weapons based on new physical principles. Now, this completely freaked out Western spokesmen, uh, so much so that hardly anyone said anything. The, the media didn't really cover it. One Western analyst said this was a veil of mystery about what Putin was speaking about. Well, he clarified it a little bit. It was clarified in TASS and by other spokesmen for Putin, talking about the use of particle beams, laser beams, microwave, electromagnetic, electromagnetic pulse, and other kinds of technologies for weapons. But this was in the context of Putin's speech about economic development and about the nature of sovereignty, the interrelationship of science, technology, culture for the development of a sovereign nation. Now, that's not really veiled at all. In fact, Anyone who's been paying attention over the last 50 years know that this is what Lyndon LaRouche took up when he launched his Strategic Defense Initiative proposal in the late 1970s, which was eventually adopted by Ronald Reagan, but then sabotaged by the Kissinger-Brzezinski faction of the unipolar order and neocons in the United States. So the idea of moving to a new platform of development based on new technologies, which have applications in military. In this case, LaRouche intended it to put an end to the era of mutual and assured destruction. So there's no veil of mystery as to why this spooks out the, the NATO allies, because the West has fallen behind. Let me give you a couple of examples. The Wall Street Journal had an article on September 15th on the development of hypersonic weapons by Russia and China, which it reported they've been working on, they've actually are deploying them, the Russians are using them in Ukraine. And so they asked the question, why has the U.S. failed to complete a successful test program for such technologies? Now, they, they go on to say, quote, for more than 60 years, the U.S. has invested billions of dollars in dozens of programs to develop its own version of the technology, that is hypersonic weapons. Those efforts have either ended in failure or been canceled before having a chance to succeed, unquote. And a little later in the article, it says, this situation is raising alarms. Now, the Wall Street Journal offers no conclusive answer as to why this is the case. They talk about a lack of focus at the Pentagon, a lack of a strategy, inadequate tech, uh, testing infrastructure, and so on. You mean with nearly a trillion dollars a year in spending on defense, all we get for it are excuses and the ability to destroy Ukraine? This gets at the heart of the problem. It's the thinking, the underlying thinking. Perhaps there's a problem with the scientific and engineering capabilities in the United States. Perhaps the problem is the plan to maintain a unipolar order while cannibalizing your own economy, including the economy of allies such as Germany. But it's clear that the United States is moving into a new phase of economic devolution. So that's where you see the problem coming from. You cannot sustain a modern war effort or even move into new technologies when you're spending vast sums of money on a losing effort, which has the, the goal of destroying Russia's capability, but in the process is destroying Ukraine. Now, this came up again at the NATO defense ministers meeting over the weekend in Oslo, Norway, where they were meeting to discuss the progress made on the plan laid out at the Vilnius NATO summit in July. And as far as progress was concerned, they talked about more troops on high readiness, including more troops on the border areas that border Russia. Uh, this also includes Finland, it includes the Baltic states, and so on. They talked about the adaptation of the NATO command and control structures so they can 
effectively coordinate activity across a broad range of, of uh, area. And then they talked about more collective defense exercises of training. For example, coming up in early 2024, there'll be the Steadfast Defender exercise. 40,000 NATO troops will be doing exercises in Germany, Poland, and the three Baltic states. Now, all this was presented as a positive, but there was another side to the discussion, which was elaborated on by Admiral Bob Bauer from, uh, I believe he's from Denmark. He's the chairman of the NATO Military Committee. And here's what he said, quote, Today, the chiefs of defense express their concern that across the alliance, production capacity is lagging behind. Delivery times are moving to the right. That means further into the future. And prices for equipment and ammunition are shooting up. Right now, we are paying more and more for exactly the same. And that means we cannot make sure that the increased defense spending actually leads to more security. Well, of course not. And the idea of conducting wars like the war, the proxy war against Russia and Ukraine also undermines the security of NATO members. And then he actually described this a little bit more without saying it exactly that the, it's the transatlantic con economy from which NATO gets its weapons. That's collapsing. But here's what he said about it. Quote, our liberal economies are not apt at creating the prioritization that is so desperately needed right now, unquote. A very telling admission. Another telling admission was General Milley, the outgoing chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, in a conversation uh, on uh, uh, a podcast the other day, was asked about where things are going in Ukraine. And he said, even if the current counteroffensive succeeds, which he implied is unlikely, he said it will not, quote, completely kick out all the Russians, unquote, of Ukraine. In other words, don't expect success. Now, why continue? Why not take a page from one of our great presidents, John F. Kennedy, who 60 years ago on September 20th, 1963, uh, shocked the world with a proposal he made at the United Nations General Assembly meeting. Kennedy, toward the end of his address, said the following, quote, In a field where the United States and the Soviet Union have a special capacity, space, there is room for new cooperation, for further joint efforts. I include among these possibilities a joint expedition to the moon, unquote. And he went on to say that why should the U.S. and the Soviet Union conduct parallel efforts that would include, quote, duplication of research, construction, and expenditure? And he said that he believed the joint series of space missions, if enacted, quote, will require a new approach to the Cold War. Cooperation. Cooperation with an enemy. Remember, this was a year after the solution or the resolution, I should say, of the Cuban Missile Crisis, which nearly led to nuclear war between the U.S. and the Soviets. Kennedy was moving toward rapprochement, and his proposal for a joint moon mission went a long way towards convincing the rest of the world that the U.S. was serious. The Soviet Union rejected it at the time, but uh, Khrushchev's son said that he very much appreciated the offer and was very sorry that they weren't able to continue a discussion of this. But what happened? Kennedy was murdered uh, two months later, and the moves toward rapprochement were stopped, and we had another 26 years of Cold War. Now, think about that from the standpoint of what's going on in Ukraine today. The possibility for a negotiated settlement is real. To continue the war is an un acceptable expense in terms of lives of both Ukrainians and Russians, but of the destruction of the physical economy of the Western countries, which are committed to fighting this war to the last Ukrainian. I would encourage people to look at the discussion that we had Saturday afternoon in the Manhattan Project, which I'll be linking in the description page, and I'll link again 
my conversation with Helga Zeppelarouche from last Thursday, where this topic was taken up in great detail. We have an opportunity now to change history, as Kennedy was trying to do in September 1963. We cannot let this opportunity pass. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow.